Welcome back to Tools. I'm Tom. So tonight we got a little uh, short episode. We're going to grind a carbide tool bit and uh, we're helping out a, a longtime viewer down in Los Angeles, Bill De La Vega. And he's boring some uh, motorcycle cylinders uh, on his milling machine and um, have a little, tri little bit of tool trouble. So uh, we're going we're gonna to demonstrate uh, grinding a tool for a boring head. Uh, this would be a basically a single point tool that fits in a, uh, a boring bar in a boring head for the milling machine. So we'll grind uh, uh, we'll grind a tool, and uh, I got to change the wheel out on the uh, on the bench grinder and put a uh, silicon carbide wheel on it. And I have aluminum oxide wheels on it right now. So we'll swap those out. We'll grind a bit, and then uh, if we have enough time, uh, we'll do a, maybe do a test cut or two. So. Uh, um, I think that's it. Let's uh, suit up and uh, cruise over to the grinder and uh, do a little uh, tool grinding. Okay, so here's uh, here's the tool we're going to mess around with. But what I want to show first is how it has to be relieved a little bit. So to do that, I think I'm just going to draw a circle here that uh, hopefully I can draw it dark enough. You get, yeah, okay, that's no problem. You guys can see that my yellow chicken scratch paper okay so this is simulating a cylindrical bore that we're boring down into the paper here right well this is our tool here and our tools contacting that let's see let me uh, I'm gonna rotate it this way so you guys can see better so oh, actually this works good because we have a center line here right okay so if the tool is sitting like that right um, what we have to do is this is our cutting edge here, so we're sweeping in that direction, okay? So we're sweeping in that direction. So everything behind this edge has to be relieved, okay, in a curve that's smaller in radius than that curve, okay, than the curve that we're boring. So if it, if it fits small as you increment out this way, okay, then you, you totally have clearance, right? So what we're going to do is grind that back like so, okay away from that cutting edge but no more than we need to do you don't want to take it back to there or something like that right you just want enough to clear this curvature here right that's equal to the thickness of the tool right so normally we we bring a little bit more we bring it a little bit more back okay all right and then the this surface here that's resting on my finger here it needs to be tipped this way just slightly uh, one or two degrees something like that in this case okay so that's what we're gonna go grind and uh, let's go grind it okay so we're over here on the, uh, the little bench grinder and we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna change this wheel <clears throat> and replace it with uh, this guy here and um, this is an aluminum oxide wheel and this is a silicon carbide wheel so we're gonna be grinding some uh, some tungsten carbide here and uh, we're going to use that uh, instead of the aluminum oxide. Uh, so I'm just going to pop this off with my, uh, my diamond uh, super wide wrench there. And this is the left handed thread side here. Now these uh, these flanges fit pretty closely, so I gotta wiggle it off here. I suppose I should run a reamer through those or something. Pop that off, um, and I don't think I need the. This one has a large hole in it, so set that aside. Of course, this one's wedged down there. See, that little screwdriver comes in handy for all kinds of stuff. Okay, so this one already has a, a half-inch hole in it. Um, what I want to do first is uh, just kind of dink it to make sure. So it's got a... It's got a good ring to it. It's got a ding, you know. Uh, we're, what we don't want to hear is um, uh, a thud or anything like that. Um, oops. 
It's real important to have the paper on here too. Those help the, uh, the traction of the wheel against the flanges. So, okay, now um, what I like to do is put a reference mark on these. Um, I put a reference mark on both wheels uh, to start with. So maybe at the uh, three o'clock position here, um, we'll put a little mark and then I'll, I'll fire it. And I'll, put it all back together and I'll fire it up. And what I'm looking for is an out of balance condition. And what the mark does, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, do it here in a sec. What the mark does is this gives me a reference point where, uh, where I started. Okay, so that's this finger tight right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a, a reference mark there and then hopefully I'll be able to see it. And a reference mark on, on this opposite wheel over here. Can you guys see that? Yeah, okay, you can see that. So what I'll do is I'll run it, and if I'm lucky, and sometimes I'm lucky, um, I'm gonna snug that up. Now these don't need to be like Mongo tight here. You don't have to gronk on these, you know, I'm just one finger kind of thing. Um, and we'll put this back up. And I, and I leave these snug, that way I can just move them when, when I want to, you know. They don't move under operation, but I can pull them out of the way and I don't have to use a tool. Um, so with these marks, what I'll do is I'll fire it up here in a sec. I'm going to stand out of the, out of this plane of this wheel when I first initially start it. Um, and then I'll be listening and feeling for vibration. If it vibrates, I'll stop it. Then I'll clock this, say 90 degrees, something like that in relation to the other wheel. Okay. And then until I find, and most of the time you can find a spot that's just smooth as silk. Uh, so let's uh, let's go ahead and fire this up. Let's see how it behaves. Well, I don't think I'm going to improve on that. It's pretty good. But I put it this way, it's not worth going after here. Okay, so we're going to let that spin down. I'll put the cover back on uh, so I don't eat dust while I'm grinding here, and then we're going to grind this little boring tool. Okay, so we're all set here, um, and uh, we're going to do a little grinding on this, and we're going to make a, a boring tool that sits at this angle here. So we just have to get, actually I probably have to flatten that angle a little bit and then relieve behind uh, the cutting edge a little bit. So let's, uh, let's get going on that. Just going to give this a quick dress with a, uh, this is a Norton Norbide, it's a boron nitride uh, dressing stick. Okay, so I think I'm going to change this angle a little bit, flatten it out some. Okay, so now with carbide, you don't want to dunk it in water. Um, because you can shock the carbide and, and chip the edge or crack it and you can't even see it. So you kind of have to let the, the heat go into the shank and cool off a little bit before you, before you dip it, um, even if you dip it. So what I'm looking at now is the, the relief angle there. I don't need much and it looks like I got maybe one or two degrees in the bottom. And this is the bottom edge it's going to be sweeping around so I need clearance underneath it that's going up as it comes away from the, the leading edge there. So now this upper edge here I'm going to make it a little more vertical to make this edge really strong. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's it's close to 90. Let's see. Let me let me uh, rephrase that. Yeah, it's a little it's a little more acute than 90. I think you can see that. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna uh, we're gonna relieve behind the cutting edge a little bit. Um, this thing's kind of warm. I am gonna cool it off, but it's had a chance to to cool below the critical temperature, so now I can do something with it. 
Actually, I'm grinding steel, so I think I'm going to jump over on this other side real quick. And, um, and what I'm going to do is just relieve some of that steel behind that edge, and then I'll relieve the carbide. Okay, so that's all I was doing, just relieving that. So you, you make sure you can see that, yeah. So this tool cuts in a circle, right? So this has to be a smaller circle than the circle that we're boring, right? Okay, so that looks pretty good, but I still got to do something with that carbide. I got to bring that back a little bit. looking pretty good. I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to I want to I'm going to put a little chip breaker in that edge. Um, it is cast iron, but uh, it still benefits from a chip breaker and we'll demonstrate that too. So, um, the chip breaker is going to go this is the this is the edge Double check, Mr. Wizard. Yeah, okay, you can see that. This is the edge that's down, so our chip breaker will be along that edge like that. Okay. Now, to do that, I'm going to dress a little bit. I want a nice sharp corner on the wheel. Alright. And then... I'm going to uh, grind my fingernails a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to come up on the wheel like this. And basically, I'm going to align that edge, and then I'm going to put a small groove in that. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to talk when I do it. Let's see. Make sure you guys can see that spot there. So I don't sand my finger. Yeah, okay. You can see the wheels breaking down real fast there. I may have to hop over on the other side there, but let's see if we can get it done. I should have been a little more aggressive probably initially. Doesn't need much. Be okay. It's got a little. Yep, I think we're gonna be fine. So then I'm gonna I'm gonna put a very small radius on the tip, but I think I'm just gonna do that with a diamond, a hand diamond hone. So I think that tool's ready to try. Okay, so I think we're ready here. Uh, I think I got a little diamond. Uh, this is an easy lap uh, diamond hone. I'm going to hone a little radius on that tip. A little bigger than that. Looks pretty good. I kind of like that tool. Put a little more on there. So now 
I kind of screwed up here a little bit. This uh, bar, it actually holds a, a 3 8 tool, and this one's 5 16 so that was kind of for Bill's benefit. So, um, and this angle isn't quite, this, this is still going to work, but we're just going to use it like this. Um, and you know what, I'm just going to go for it. Let's just see if it works. It's pushed off center just slightly. But I don't think that's going to make much difference here for this little demo. I'm going to hang it out a little farther. Let's snug that up nicely. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right, now I got a chunk of cast iron here. We're just, this is all I had for cast iron that I felt like cutting, so uh, we're just gonna use that as our victim here. Hanging off the end. It's like 200 RPM. Uh, Alright, it's 240. Alright, and feed rate is three and a half thousandths per rev. Let's uh, do one thing here. Make sure I'm okay. I get, I'm just getting. Let me double check. Make sure you get. You know what? That is a crummy camera angle. Let me uh, let me change the camera angle a little bit so you guys can see better. All right, that looks better. So let's take a little bite out of this. Let's see what happens here. I'll go ahead and lock the table here. And I'm engaged. And let's go ahead and feed a little bit. See what happens, vice is tight. It's coming down. Should start dinking any second now. There it goes. I'm going to catch some chips here so you guys can see them. Well, I'll show the chips in a second here. Let's just uh, do a cut. Now that's an interrupted cut too. The chips look pretty good. They got a little curl to them. Uh, what I want to see is the, uh, the finish on that uh, once we get through. And then just for reference, here's the, the one I took out of it that, that would have worked also. And this one just has a, an angle uh, closer to 90 degrees to the, to the bore axis, which is what you want for, uh, for fine boring. back and we'll take a bigger cut too. Now this is kind of boring, huh? <laughs> Oop. What's going on there? Oh, okay. Now sometimes if the uh, the brake is on too hard it uh, kicks the feet out. Okay, so here's a little trick guys, so I'm going to stop it here. Now let's just, you know these things rotate eccentrically, right? I'm going to put it in neutral for a sec. So I have a couple of choices. I can, I can lift it up here, okay, but 
there's a possibility that I'm going to drag that tool uh, over that work, okay? And with a carbide tool, it's really easy to chip it on the backstroke, okay? So, you know, if you have a DRO or some indicator set up, what you can do is back it away from your freshly cut surface a little bit, then back it up. That way you don't drag that tool tip over that surface and risk chipping that edge that you just spent all that time grinding, okay? So, um, and you know, you, generally you can do that in a bore because you're rotating eccentrically, right? So you can just move off axis a little bit, come out, be sure to come back, and then do it, and that way you won't uh, dink your tool. Now the other way around that is to feed up, um, but a lot of times the tool geometry doesn't lend itself to that because it's a, it's a, fra a more fragile edge. I hope that makes sense. So, um, all right, so let's... Let's uh, evaluate our cut here, um, and it feels pretty smooth to me. Um, let's see, what else do we want to try with that? Bigger cut? Um, I don't know. Let's look at some chips. Let me change the camera. All right, well, here's some of the chips from that last cut, and you can see they're, you know, they're little curls there, right? Okay, they're pretty happy chips um, as opposed to mean chips, right? Okay, and then uh, let me uh, see if I can zoom in on the on the cut uh, that we just did as well. All right, so there's there's our cut surface that we just did there. Okay, and it's pretty smooth. You know, you can get it smoother. That was a three and a half thousand or three and a half. Yeah, three and a half thousands per rev feed rate, uh, which is fairly fast. But if we you know we can slow it down too and get a uh, a finer feed rate. Okay. Okay, and last but not least, here's the tool in the holder here that we just did. Um, and like I said, the, uh, the angle on the bottom isn't uh, optimal for reduced chatter. So, so it's got a little lead angle here like so, right? So if you're having chatter problems, what you want to do is bring this angle this way, closer to 90 degrees to your, uh, your bore axis like that, okay? Uh, and that reduces chatter. And this one was kind of set up that way uh, for this angle. Hold, eh, come on, goober. Okay, this one was set up a little bit better for that. Um, I don't think we need to test that, but uh, anyway, uh, there it is. Uh, cast iron boring. Um, sorry, I don't have a, a cylindrical uh, hole to do, but uh, I think you guys get the uh, get the message there. Get the point.